We good now? Yeah, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Damn, that was weird. What's up, brother? Peace. Peace, All peace. I'm going to try to see if this, uh, my audio coming through clean. Oh, you're good, man. 100%. Mm -hmm. All right, man. I guess I guess we good right now. Um, I'm gonna hit this light. All right. Uh, see how we got it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a go, man. Um, sheesh, it's a it's an honor and a pleasure to uh, begin this journey of kicking off this objectively aggressive and i think i want to start doing this until i don't want to do it anymore and the reason i say that is because man we were talking today i'm gonna have a, have a little shout out we were talking today and i just felt like Every single thing that we were saying should have been recorded and archived for for right now and, and a time capsule for <laughs> the future generation. And I think that this is an opportunity to just be very aggressive. And like you said, out front, I mean, out front with our message that there's nothing to hide, but I oh. still think. I still think there's some covert going on, you know. We we still oh, 100%, man. I think you 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 hit the nail, man. I feel like we we have conversations, but we talk about archiving data. But this but this is important because it's historical. Right. Because the first history was oral history. You know, it was just me telling you a story and you telling that story to somebody else cuz we couldn't read or write. So right. so now we are able to document and it's um it's a very powerful tool. Okay. Okay. So well, let's start. Everybody's doing it. And I feel like some people are doing it and it's not necessarily conducive to what's needed, but Hey, that's, that's what freedom of speech is. Right. As I sit up here and mess with my light, oh, yeah. I'm going to get it together one day. Um, so with this, with this inaugural kickoff for, um, objectively aggressive, I want to kick it off in a format so we can just just keep it real and, and just stay structured so this is our sweet serenade to the evolution of religious thought <laughs> I, like to, I would like to consider this like a um <clears throat> a series i wanted to call it the, the lake house effect series i see i see yeah <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? And so regardless of what it is, because sometimes you can't tell people exactly what to do, but that lake house effect being the the warning or the guide, right? I think either or you 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 take it, you take it how you live, you, you take it how you live is what we used to say. Yeah. Get it how you live. Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, because there's there's going to be there's going to be deconstruction involved in the process of learning because be. because you're going to have to you're going to have to come to some hard truths and that's people who you love and trust told you things that were not true and that will shake your foundation because if that wasn't true then what else did they tell me it wasn't true and when and when people we care about mislead us and sometimes not of their own volition because they're misled too Right. So, 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 so all they were doing is just passing down the, the, the misinformation to you and you accepted it like it was truth. And that's why I don't, that's why when I've had to deconstruct in my own world, it's very personal. It's very private. And sometimes it can't be done in a group setting. It has okay. to be, you know, the information comes and then, but you got to wrestle with it. So my dad told me, you know, because the way these things look, they look different to other people. And so when you're wrestling with these 
people can call them demons or these introspections like trying to share these with people who have never experienced it it's 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 speaking a different language and sometimes it feels some somewhat alien you know because people can't recognize so with that thought as we move into this evolution of of religious thought so the intro would be okay so i'll set the platform right we we live in a world right now where we need to be very aggressive and 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 how we approach things right be very tactical but have a be tied to the strategic mindset of there's an overarching goal that we need to to get after so tactically we're going to break things down um to the level that lay people can at least hear certain things and be like okay that resonates that resonates okay so the intro to religious thought is to break down the terms and, and so what we're going to be talking about is how do people digest what we're really about to get into yeah yeah and so you brought up a good point man when you start talking about digesting in terms because you know some of the terms get used interchangeably you know religion spirituality um one is external one is internal correct correct and so when you start to talk about how the external affects the internal then you start to muddy the waters Right. Because you can do things that are spiritual for religious purposes. And you can do things that are religion that have that same that have that same spiritual purpose if it's what you're thinking you're getting out of it. And I right. think that that's part of the part of the challenge is to to decouple from ideology first, because religion is ideology. It's it's doctrine. And see, one of the biggest problems that we have, it's who are you? to challenge 2000 year old teaching who yeah. are you to challenge the church fathers who are you to to go against all this established teaching and doctrine well who are you and see that's the problem religion says that i am a follower first a thinker second okay so there are some things there's some disciplines that has taught us that to be a true leader you have to know how to follow well, when you start to talk about following, though, the question then becomes is that follow to what end? We're because a lot of times a blind person cannot lead anywhere. You've heard the saying in the land of the blind, the one eyed man is king. king. And, and so we have looked at blind guides. Okay. So, so essentially, if the dude that I'm following is lost, he can't tell me he lost. Right. And he so that's humility okay and, and with humility i have to say i don't have all the answers you don't have all the answers but together we can reason together like for example come let us you and me reason together and if it's reasonable then we can build off of that reason and so what happens with religion is when something is not reasonable they say have faith they oh. say trust it, the doubt. But I'm like, no, no, no. You can't do that. You can't say have faith and then reason with me. Okay. So, okay. so, so we have to have reason first, and then you can use your faith and your 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 dogma afterwards. But so, why, why is reasoning reasoning is so important? Because reasoning gives thought to any decision that you make. Yes. Right. So any decision that you make it has to be a reason that you do it there has to be a rationale yes. but then there needs to be some sort of emotion tied to it like why why am i doing this what what does it matter to me and you remember uh from when we were talking earlier it comes down to a um you're doing it out of love or fear yeah motive yeah okay so the motive yeah. being love and fear when it comes into this religious thought and is it because loved ones are teaching you this stuff? You have no other choice sometimes, but these people are nourishing you and, yes. and, and you're running to them for, for survival and they're teaching you these things. So, well, so, so it's, it's called the falling away. Some people call it existential crisis. Some call it midlife crisis. It's when you start to think for yourself for the first time ever. Oh, when you begin to do that, it is dangerous Yeah, because thinking is difficult because Correct. it requires you to be able to 
disprove what you've been taught by reason. For example, if you read the Bible, it says in in uh, John chapter one, in the beginning was the word, right? Yeah, it was the word. But, but, but what does the word mean in Greek? The word is logos. That means uh, logic. Logic. So, so logic. That was so the Greek, but logic in the Greek is also translated as reason. Reason, yes, for sure. So, so, so in the beginning, there was reason. There was reason. logic. Reason, but so, but so in 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 the way in in my discipline, right? In my leadership theory, logic and reason sit juxtaposition to each other, but are not the same. They're not. They're not because reason is subjective to the individual. For example, something may be reasonable to me that may be irrational to you. Absolutely. That may be unreasonable to you. So reason, that's why we are told to come do what? Reason together. Right. Because Correct. if I'm reasoning by myself and I'm on the committee of one, I may have my great reasons. But yeah. you might come in and be like, that's not a good reason. No. And now I have to now I have to hear what you say with my now I have to use my logic to validate your reasoning. Correct. Correct. And so with 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 that 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 goes directly into why the name of this podcast is objectively aggressive right like it, it it's taking like hey everybody has a reason to be on their high horse about something right? yeah. you know and and so as we go off on whatever we we go off on we're trying to we're trying to look at it objectively but yeah. there's a reason that we're doing it so there's a bias to it but we're trying to check that well, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. And the first thing you have to do is you have to identify your biases, because if I don't tell you what, what I'm biased to. So so I will share with you one thing about me. I will have a conversation with somebody and I am willing to change everything I thought, felt or believe in that conversation at that moment. If you can reason better. That's what I, I mean. mean. That's what I mean. You were yeah. talking about. Yeah, I feel because, that yeah. way. Because I don't have any belief that I hold so closely that you can't unreason me out of. But I will tell you, if you're going to unreason me out of it, you better do a lot of scholarship. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, it, it, and that's why. So, like, as we matriculate through this, you know, I, I think tying our disciplines together yeah. will bring, give more. I, I, I can't say, I can say 360 for me. And you can attest a 360 perspective for you because if we put our backs together, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? We we that's 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 the tactical understanding that if there are two people having to take this on, me and you understand that from a tactical military military understanding of having somebody six. Yep. And so yep. understanding that as we speak these terms and continuously matriculating through, I think it's important that we 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 establish that they there are terms that are synonymous with each other yeah. at a certain time but as it's applicable to us they're they're mutually exclusive for what we're talking about right oh, yeah and, and that's the that's the beauty about what you do being able to line up those events right you know what i mean like that is directly la 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 and my my system thinking you know being able to bring it together like Hey, the analogy for that is this. And so yeah. it's important that these terms are understood that the rationalization for why we do things needs to be tied to some sort of logic. But we need to change the logic about why we do a lot of the things that we do. Oh, yeah. But you're but you're 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 thinking about the foundation of all knowledge starts if we don't have evidence if I can't observe it with my eyes, if I can't feel it, then we have to use a, a priori or a framework or a theory to explain the phenomenon. We have to have something that fills in the blank for us that we can't prove. And so, we're, so whether you're religious, whether you're atheist, whatever you believe, it starts off with the foundation that you have no evidence. You, you have no evidence of a Big Bang, but you didn't see it. But you can deduce through logic that something happened. But what I find out what happens in most instances is that people, if the if the premise is faulty, the conclusion will be an error. 
Right. So, so we have to make sure that we don't start off with a premise that is faulty because we will essentially read us, we will go, but people don't have the ability sometimes to spot the error until they're already in the argument. Correct. I mean, but that's what we, we're talking about introspection through dialogue yeah. and, and that happens. And I, I think it's appropriate, you know, to address the fact that with the initial attempt to understand religion, like you said, it's the accountability system because you recognize that the pleasures of life drive people to take corner to to, to cut corners in life yes. you cut corners because it's just easy your brain just wants your life to be easy yeah at the same time life is a struggle and so we will always try to cut corners and as we as we as we know that about human beings we created this accountability system yeah that manifested and evolved into the multi-faceted yeah. disciplines that we have today yeah but all tied to some sort of deity most of them well yeah if you if you go back to egypt and you look at the sphinx why is a lion body have a head of a human because the egyptians understood that humanity is animal we are the human without the mind we are animals the right. lion was symbolic of power of animal instincts and then the mind will control the beast which is man man is the beast man we are the ones who without the mind like i said the only reason we don't pee on trees is because it's not socially acceptable who who doesn't pee on trees well i'm saying you know the reason that most people don't pee on trees is they ain't so bad enough well you know, because no but, th but that's important because a lot of the times when you talk about controlling the beast, the animal of us, that's what the Egyptians started off. The Egyptians were the first ones to really codify a belief system. So you, so when you start talking about the Assyrian, the Egyptians, you start to see the evolution of the thought coming from this first understanding that man is beast if he's not connected to the mind. Right. It, it, okay. So shit. Listen, you think about that in, 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 in real talk right now, like you start drinking, people be on drugs, you get animalistic, right? You okay. get in, you get in group cool. thing situations and sometimes you don't even need drugs, right? You just, you just turned up on adrenaline and stuff like that. So, yep. you know, you, 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 people find ways to lose the mind. Oh, oh yeah. And, and, and so, you know, it, it, oh, yeah. it being, being, Cognitive ease, like being with the group and being able to just assimilate into a group and have the, the pressure of making decisions taken away because everyone else is doing it is a beautiful thing to have. And which is why our parents always used to say, well, if everybody go jump off a bridge, are you going to do it? You're like, oh, what <laughs> Wait, he asked, why are they jumping off the bridge? Why are they jumping is, off the is bridge? The, is the bridge fault collapsing and they're jumping off okay. for safety? More questions need to be asked. Well, that's okay. the that's the Socratic method. The Socratic okay. method is the art of questioning. And so one of the things religion teaches you is don't question. Believe. Right. right. Anytime I, you tell me to believe something, my first thought is you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, bet. <laughs> That's that's exactly what's going on. But if you take that same framework of what I was saying, uh, okay, so the to to question something is to be curious or to be concerned. Okay, right. Except so the concern is why is religion such a big deal right now? when in the original thought it was just to help keep us in order morally right so morally we just want people to just let's just all get along right and so why yeah, but I, I would i would only argue that before morality came into question the idea that there was an order to the universe okay so, so from the disorder from the chaos came order. 
So, so, so everything that happened after that was, was a derivative. Morality was a derivative of, of order, of structure to, um, uh, the reason that the, that the sun rotates on the axis that it rotates on, the reason that this, it rains. So if we don't understand the order, it creates chaos externally. So nature has balance. So I believe that since nature has balance, we start to see that we need balance also. So, order of operations, right? Order exactly. of operation. Yes. And so the order, it's the design. If it's design, it has a designer. Mm. And, and so what, what happens in most religious thought is that designer has a term called deity, God, etc. Mm. And, 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 and but that's where you have to be careful, because saying God is like saying cereal. There are many different types of cereal. So you have to be specific when you say God, that you're not talking about somebody else's deity. See, we say God is a generic term, but it's not generic. It's very specific. There is. There's polyistic thought that says that the God that I'm speaking to is the God of war. Right. I'm speaking to the God of like Nike is the God of athletics. Okay. So okay. if I need athletic strength, I'm going to pray to Nike. I'm not going to pray to Apollos. You know what I mean? Because each God has their function. Wow. And wow. That's interesting. So if you take that concept, right, because you were you you mentioned something about when you get your own conscious thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, studies show that the reason that imagination is so important in children before the age of like seven, before they have the conscious thought of remembering and understanding yeah. and understanding the application of life, imagination is so important to the function of the brain. Oh, yes. Right. And, 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 and how things work and what the what the brain is creating as expectation of yes. life. Yes. And so when we talk about praying to the Nike gods and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like you, you, you remember, I remember praying to like the Nike guys or the Jordan guys or whatever shoes I was wearing when I was playing a sport at a young age. Like, oh, my God, I put on these good shoes and I'm about to, you know, what I mean, take off. And just do a, a whole lot of goddamn damage, you know what I mean? Because yeah. of these shoes, because I prayed to God in the shoes, because I was taught don't ever put anything over God. Well, but I'm gonna make sure I sprinkle a little something on these shoes, right? God help these shoes. Yeah, but that's when that's why I believe that when you start talking about the evolution of thought, the God that you needed for that occasion is the one who need to be invoked. Well. So so, so so let's 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 break that down let's break that down that is taking a belief yes period point blank yes a belief that you need to draw from a certain strength yes and have faith in that and believe yes that you can do that and walk with an attitude that you're about to do it yes and so everything else should line up and if you've prepared for it, you remember what we said, luck, you know, luck is nothing but the opportunity preparation. preparation meeting each other. Right. Yep. And so that but but that's what life ends up being. And so, OK, so with that, with, with life being that as I try as we try to have an order of operation here. So we'll say there's a lot of capping going on. Right. <clears throat> capping being like people on that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and this inaugural event like it's a little rusty it's a little rudimentary but we're keeping it real it's you know yeah i make sure everything remains raw old dirty bastard type shit and so confident opinion man which we, we're talking about some some serious heavy hitting stuff and religion can be very 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 touchy but yeah let's 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 get into some very confident opinions that could that could you know um offend some people let's get let's get a little aggressive Oh, well, so, yeah. So, so I, I will tell you, man, you know, I, I find that as a principle, you know, one of the things I think is I, I try not to tear down things that people rely on or mm -hmm. in. But mm -hmm. what I find happening in most instances is that people that want to be challenged are already looking for the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already looking. But so so I will tell you, you know, one of the things that I've seen happen in most instances with religion, you know, I've seen people, they don't want to question authority. 
They don't want to challenge. Want to. Yeah, well, like, you know, it's like my pastor said, so it's gospel. Like, like it's, your, like they've, your been taught, they've been taught not to do it because that's the cultural relativism well, that's, yeah. that's being implemented at, at the at the house and at school. But, but don't question can, the government. Don't question God. But how can I grow if I can't ask you questions? There's no point. That, that, that's the point. You're not supposed to grow. Well, 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 if you're not growing, then you're dead. If you're working, it makes it seem like you're having progress. That's why the American dream is absolutely true, because a nightmare is still a dream. And where and where where the challenge comes in is that what happens when you. So what. So if you take religion off the table, what are you left with? And I think for some people they would be scared because they would be afraid to have to think for themselves. Yeah. But it'd be, fright it'd be frightening. Like, like what would I have if I couldn't go to this place every week and, and, and structure my life off of. And so when you are, when you are excavating a building, you're trying to build a structure. You want to build a cornerstone of something that is foundational that can't be moved. And so that's, I believe one of the biggest challenges when it comes to talking about religion, why it gets touchy is because people think you're trying to remove their cornerstone from them. You're, people, you're, you're, you're asking people to think for themselves, and people don't know how to think for themselves. Well, yeah, but that's but that's the beauty of it. The beauty of it is, if I want power, there's nothing better than a bunch of people who don't want to think. <laughs> like, oh so, yeah, for sure. That's how Trump got exactly the way he got right. Yeah, because when you have to when you have to have people who who don't want to think. All you have to do is give them tribalism. My tribalism, tribe. okay. Yeah, my cool. tribe. So, so buzzword, aggressive. Yeah. That's a that's a OA buzzword. Tribalism. Yes. Okay. So we're talking we're talking classism, tribalism, racism, right? Yes. We're talking tribalism right now. Well, because the but the goal of tribes is to get more power. That's all it is. Okay. okay so 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 at the, at the end of the day. I believe that the central aim of religion is power, as is meant as today. It's I need power. But at the same time, you can get power two ways. You can get power by being competent or you can get power by using force, by using authoritarian. So that, that's how you get to the to the pyramid. You can crush your competition or you can outsmart everybody to the top. And, 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 and so <laughs> I have a saying for OA. It's negotiation or annihilation. Yes. It's 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 you can have the Bible or you have these bullets. Convert <laughs> or die. Hey. And, and so most people, if you are a true believer, you're gonna you're gonna accept a martyrdom complex because you have people, you know, one of the things about the Bible that I find out to be very interesting, you know, before Jesus died, he told people, he said, you know. His disciples asked him a question. He said, "What is going to be the signs of the of your coming and your return in the days? What should we expect to see?" And 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 Jesus said, "You know, many people will come in my name." And you look at that word "name" in the Greek; it means authority. Okay. That means they're not people are not going to come and saying they're Jesus Christ. They're going to come and say Jesus Christ sent me. Right. Okay. And, okay. and that's why I think a lot of people are deceived. Because right now, if somebody came out and said, I'm Jesus Christ, we'd all think he was crazy. We all think that David Koresh, that's, he's lunatic. Right, right. But if he said, I come in the name or the authority of the Christ, we're like, well, okay, me too. And so, so that's part of, I think, why religion has been so deceptive for people is because you have people who are misappropriating the scripture, the Bible, for their own purposes mm. and not its truth of its stories. Because I tell you right now, you know, if you want something controversial, that ain't nobody living in the Middle East named Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> like the names only make sense, bro. Hey, these are English names. <laughs> why, why are two thousand years ago there's a Matthew, hey, bro, Mark, Luke, John? Come on, bro. These names don't even fit with the region. Boy, you just hit that one out the park. Let me tell you something. That was a confident opinion. Hey, let's say let's 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 take that confident opinion and get aggressive as AF, right? <laughs> let's get aggressive AF right here and talk about how people who buy into religion are actually buying into the pawn 
uh, the pawn mindset of being like mowed down. You're 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 being taught to oh, be man. victims. Yeah. Oh, bro! It, so I will tell you this, man. So, so religion is based on a faulty premise that if I do what you tell me now, I will go to some afterlife when I die. So, like, hey, take the suffering now because there's something better waiting for you. But no. the problem with this teaching. And the problem with this thinking is nobody has come back from the afterlife to tell us this. So you got to believe that. that and, part. and I will tell you this right now. The people who teach that to you, they got their heaven right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now. They got their they got their gold plated ceilings right now. And hey. they know, and they know that if they can use that fear, like you're talking about, right? So so like I don't want to go to the afterlife, and they don't even understand the origin of this teaching. Right. So so when you start to talk about that fear and this is why it's perpetuated, because they believe if I die in my belief, I'm going to get 72 virgins. I'm going to get some reward. And my question becomes is if you're focused on the reward when you die, it makes you not focus on power now because you can only focus on one thing at a time. Well, good. Right. Yeah, good. <laughs> right. So if you're being told to not focus right now, focus on later, let Bruh. me focus on right now. Well, that's what a, that's what a magician does. Focus, right. Look at my left hand, and then my right hand is eating your lunch. Right. <laughs> but you know what? I will tell you this. You know, the church, the Catholic church specifically, they had a practice called indulgences where you could buy your way into heaven. Essentially, uh -huh. you could buy your way out of purgatory. I remember that. And they I remember. were doing that because they were trying to build all these cathedrals and they Correct. was running out of money. And it was like, wait a minute. It was, nice. it was a religious thing. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, they was trying to get people's money now to buy heaven later. And my thought process is, well, if you want heaven that bad later and you're not concerned about life now, you go shoot yourself. Right. But you can't do it unless you do what I tell you. But these were the people. Who would not let you read the book? No, they wouldn't let you read. You can't know. You can't know the structural frame. Take my word for it. That's what it was. Hey, Trust look at this robe I got on. Look at this. Oh, yeah. hat. Check it out, right? Hey, if you think I'm lying, look at look at look at all these wonderful things. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at all these man. earthly. Look at all these earthly blessings I have right now. Like like, you know, I tell you, man. The reason we get so caught up and deceived is because we think if somebody got a Cadillac. In a nice house, they bless the God. Like, look, he got the favor of God on him because he got a Cadillac. And I'm like, bro, you realize that there's a God in the Bible called Mammon, M-A-M-M-O-N. It's the God of wealth, of substance, and this is who they worship. They're worshiping a God now called Mammoth in order for you to give you their stuff. Hey, I want 10% of your paycheck because God wants to build his house. And I'm like, wait a minute. First off, he said that his house will not be made with human hands. So what you building? <laughs> you building your house. Mm. You building your house, calling it God's house, Ooh. and then want me to subsidize it. Uh, and I'm like, wait a minute, bro. No, 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 no. See, he told him he when you you go back to this. This is this is the inter thought of religion. He said, listen, the evolution of religious thought. Is for God to be inside of you. Yeah, that's the, that's eventually it's to be you are essentially an emissary or an ambassador of God. However, the tenets are not the same because your God, I might have to go Old Testament on you, right? And I'm like, look, I... there, was a, there was a lot of genocide in the Bible. Oh yeah, for sure. I like, look, go kill the Hittites, the Amorites, the Malachites, kill everybody, right? right. And so why? to go and get their land. So mm. they use religious thought to slaughter people to take their land. And we doing the same thing today. We're using mm. religious thought to slaughter people to take their land. For sure. So, so religious thought, if you follow it, even from the Bible, it's slaughter genocide to take what you want. Because if I say God told me to do it, I'm absolved. God said it. And that's why I believe the danger of religious thought is, is because you can justify any act if you believe you are doing it for a deity. Right. And that's the rationalization. That's right. the rationalization that can exonerate somebody from their behavior 
right? Yeah. And then there can be a certain group, social group, uh, you know, whatever group that supports whatever they like. Yeah. They can say, "Oh, that makes total sense to me." Oh yeah, right? and so hey, when 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 your religious beliefs and your political beliefs line up you made god in your image not not the other way around sure which is so so let's talk about this let's talk about uh, let's get to the part of aggressive where we talk about what's the difference between me and you and that ain't necessarily me and you but we're having a conversation about how of course of course christianity would be the religion right now i mean when you conquer a people or a land you make them pray to your god well 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 see and that's the beauty of it so the beauty of it is i don't need you to pray to my god if you pay me tribute like see the greeks learned something that was very powerful the greeks said listen you can keep your god if you want but when we call on you for tr for troops and soldiers, you have to pay us a tribute. And, and so when you look at Persia, when you look at Rome, the thought. So they realized that we didn't need, we did not need to give these people our God because we did not need them to come into our territory. It was only when you came into their territory was their belief system involved because they really. That sounds like jurisdiction. That sounds yeah. like religious well, well, jurisdiction. Yeah, because they understood something that that I want your fealty, I want your loyalty. And if I can get your loyalty without any other issues, then, then just give me your loyalty. Give me your loyalty and see what we have learned is that through that process, we have created peoples who have who have retained their religious thought over over time because the, the the christianity argument has only really been in in world history if you look at the totality of it christianity is probably the longest span since its inception but when you right. start to look at the thoughts that led up to it mm -hmm. a lot of christianity has paganism in it like right. sunday sunday in the roman empire was the sun god's day of worship Right. It was never the Sabbath. We, we 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 know that the scholars know this. We we know that Easter is a pagan god of fertility. We know that they ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? But these were customs that were brought into the church in order to keep people connected to the to the thought process. Like if, if you read the Bible, right? There is not one scripture that says anything about a nun. There's no nuns, but the yeah. nuns were the people who took care of the temples of the gods. Right. They were the virgins who would right. stand out and keep the temple up. But right. they were like, look, we want to keep this practice because we don't want to alienate or isolate this segment of the population who believes that custom. So you right. had Christianity was this big smorgasbord of all these customs and traditions and put under one umbrella. Right. Come Christianity, boom, believe. And so, okay, so let's take that same thought process with, whiteness <laughs> right <laughs> right because at some point in time like there was a segregation of anglo-saxons and and you know the europeans and you know at one point in time they were calling irish and italians words that eventually yeah. black folks yeah. became those words and the italians and irish end up turning around calling us the same thing and they assimilated into that culture and yeah. at some point in time, maybe what, 1920s or something like that, they were holding legal processes and procedures to determine whether whether groups, ethnic groups were white. So whiteness is a property, just like religion is a property. Oh, yeah. And then and then you had the people who were passing, you know, the, the one drop rule, the out the room, you know, quadroon. But one of the things that I've learned is that when you start to talk about social constructs, classism, see, most people realize what America would look like if there were no black people here. We look like Europe, yeah. officially, 
we'd be policed differently. We understand that. If we got into a philosophy that we are here, some say under duress, but we are here making the best of a social construct that is a class system, and we just so happen to be at the bottom of that system. Correct. But there has always been this throughout history. This is not a new phenomenon. You know, right. if you go back into the British, the English civil wars, you always had class struggle and you always had that. Unfortunately, the class struggle in America is just about race, but it's socially constructed. It's socially constructed to avoid the classism and the tribalism. Well, well, but, Bert, but first it's for power. Power. The, the classism is the power. Wow. Yes. And, and so they... So racism now is not really concerned with color as it is power. Right. That's why, that's why they're like, hey, if you're if you're coming in from China or you're coming in from in these Asian countries, you can be white. You know, if you are Hispanic and you are the light side Hispanic, you can get some of that South Florida whiteness. Right. And, and so it, it's all about the immigration system when it came to you know, like everything was an overreaction to you know, pat to the past events, like the way the you know, Eastern Asian yeah. uh, population was treated. And then after that, they developed a program to say, hey, we're going to let them in, but make sure we let all the smart ones in. And then we'll make them the ideal minority and oh, make yeah. everybody else feel some sort of way about it. Right. Yeah. And so they, yeah. There, there's been all these strategic um, things that have been applied at the tactical level to to segregate people further further into this into this race complex to conflate yeah. to conflate all these damn issues well, to well, make us confused well, on your on your point of religion i would say that that the reason that there is a black church in america is because of racism it was it was racism that started the ame church it right. was racism that started the baptist that way they separate from the northern baptist southern baptist they well, didn't didn't go to church with the white yeah, folks yeah they didn't they didn't separate because they had theological differences no. they separated themselves because of racism and so when you start to look at it you start to look at how deep it goes into the psychology into the psychosis is that i don't even want to worship the god who forgave us all if, if that's what you believe with you there and, and, right, and right, right right okay so let me introduce this other thought to you real quick then why would you want to you're not even praying for the same things no. you don't have the same struggles Right? Have you ever went to a yeah. white church? Have you ever oh, went yeah. to a white church and yep. you just in there and you, you don't even move the same? It's like hey, you got the hymn, you got your hymn book. You're like, right. you're like you like get a little hymn book and the the collection plate come around. You be like, I need to get a little bit of this. Thank you, Lord. You know what I mean? Like she. But, but therein lies the challenge for us. And it was, I think, it was Malcolm or, or Martin. Malcolm said the most segregated hour in America is it's 12, 12 o'clock on Sunday. Sunday. And so we are all we already know that. Yeah. And so one of the things that so so if you are oppressed, you're praying that your oppressor stops oppressing you. Correct. If you are the oppressor, you're praying for status quo. Hey, right. Keep me in this role. Keep Correct. Me my season, my breakthrough, my harvest, my mirror, you know, yeah, all, harvest, that. all that other that normal stuff. Yes. Because, all right. So take take that harvest conversation, right? before there were all these social constructs and issues and stuff this is what you were praying to deities for yes. you were praying to the deities for the harvest and make for it rain make it rain make so it this rain. church was originally for yes before i mean i won't say originally for we'll say the original construct of religion for a certain people yeah on oppressed was just keeping people in line and yeah. praying for the harvest. Yeah, you, because we know they made a slave Bible that was just for slaves. They took out the old, they took out 90% of the old testament, they took out about 50% of the new testament, they made a little book and they highlighted slave obey your master, as this is your work unto God. They highlighted these passages because they wanted us to know that if we believe god because slavery was your position that god gave you right. I, it's, like, it's like hey white person didn't make you a slave god right. made, you, made a you a slave and he made me your master and i'm the best master right yes and that is the the psychosis that we're stuck with is this master complex because 
it does not just affect us. They still think with this master complex. Okay, okay. So let's let's, think that way. let's 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 get in. Let's get into a cocky a cocky explanation. Then, right? You say a master complex. Master right? complex. The master complex, right? Okay. So so there's a lot of people out here who thinking they they got it going on, whatever, right? They I, I call it um spectacularly regular, right? Okay. So. <laughs> And it's a, I made a song called Spectacularly Regular. Yeah. Like Spectacularly Regular. I know that I am better than a lot of people getting the shine. So now I'm telling them. Yep. Right. And so and so the, the regularly spectacular is like, okay, you got this master complex, right? And so we find ourselves with certain things being our master. Oh. Right. And so, hey, listen, there's a lot of people, and we all got our masters like. And, and and you know, kill a mic and run the jewels with LP and them, right? Right, right. They say kill your master, right? Yep. And so the master and, and music, you want to own your masters. You want to own your masters, you right? You want to own your you want I, I want to be the master of me. Master, but that's the difference between okay, so that gets back into what's the difference, but back to our cochlear explanation. Yep. That's the difference between independence and autonomy, mm. right. Okay. Okay, like people don't even understand it. Hey. I, Andy, Andy. Uh, that shit did make sense back then when I was that age, but yeah. now autonomy, like, oh, you want an independent woman? No, 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 shout it. Mm. Uh, it's not all just about that, but I do understand the thought yeah. process, right? Yes. And so the cockley explanation, I think, is sometimes when you sit at this higher consciousness, right, this higher vibration. Right, you understand that we're trying to break the chains of all these masters that have been like lording over our lives. And we, and we, 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 when we say somebody is possessed, we don't say it in the right context, okay? Because, because what possesses you can be material, like, okay. like my, my car is a possession, right? But if my car is tied up into who I am, it possesses me. For sure. And if you're if your life is tied up into that car and that car stops working, yeah, you're surely at the mercy of that car. And and so when I talk about possession, what has happened is the worst possession that I've ever seen is ideological possession. When a thought possesses your mind, mm. see, when a thought possesses your mind, it, it, it does not listen to reason and, and logic. Because the thought possesses you, it will defend itself based on its own reasoning, right? Which and, and it won't allow us to reason together, because I, because I will tell you when somebody is possessed with a thought, my first reaction is to challenge the thought, not the person. Oh, for sure. But well, okay, and, 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 and you know this is this is of course there's a lot of interruption that comes yeah. with us, but. You, you 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 challenge the thought. Challenge the thought. Why? Because one of the things about thoughts is that without, like, uh, it's a quote from Thomas Paine. He said, a long time of not thinking that something is wrong gives it the artificial appearance of being right. Okay, so that's why I talked about that acronym I created. So, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 words. words. Action, action intention timing and then you got the unknown right unknown. so if you only have words cool cool good shit if you only got action you know what they say about that like when you point your finger you're pointing like three or four back at you yep when it's only intention it's like you know they say good intentions paved the road to hell yep. and then timing is just like just wandering right so you have all those things in, in order to check who you are Yes. But check like when you hear something, too, and people should if people are doing that just for a second, because that emotional thinking is yes. that system one fast thinking, man. And like system one fast thinking is for survival of your life, bro. Yes. Like, hey, there is a my dog right here. Luckily, that's my dog, because if that wasn't my dog, I would have some very some 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 system one thinking to do. Like there was yeah. this random damn dog in my house. Yeah. And you right. don't know and you don't know where you are at 
with somebody in the cognitive process at the timing of the conversation. For example, you could be having a conversation with somebody and at the moment you speak, you can see the light bulb come on in their head. Yeah. Literally, literally, you can see the eureka moment. Like, yeah. boom. It's uh -huh. like they, they, they just got it. And But uh -huh. you don't know. They could have been in years teetering on a thought. And that one thing that you said on that one day was the boom. Right. And that is where I think when it comes to the challenge of thought is because it's so quick. It can be it can be it can be quick to you, but it was slow to them. You, right. you, you think you said something profound to them, not knowing that you just was building on what people have been saying. And now right. that you 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 are the finally what they say, you know, the the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back with the thought yes. that it finally came through, right? Yes, which is why people, which is why people yell at their kids, 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 but their kids get so tired of hearing it from the same person, but they hear it from somebody else, be like, oh yeah, 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 makes sense, and, and and that's where I believe when we start talking about religion, is the is the biggest problem because you start to get around people who share your thinking and they reinforce thought. That's group think. Yes, and and when you talk about belief, group belief. Right. It's 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 when you talk about psychosis, it's when you lose touch with reality. Right. But if I only construct my reality around people who think like me, who's insane or not? Is it me or you? Right. Who 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 is the one who's not in touch? Because right. I'm in touch because everybody around me shares my reality. Correct. So everybody is sane, and anybody who wants to break rank is the crazy one. You're the crazy one. And right. therein is where the ideological possession, it's usually done in person. It's in private. It's deconstructing. Right. It's meditating. It's it's in the midnight hour when you, it's right. just you and your thoughts. Your shower thoughts. Shower thoughts. And, and oh, bro. Hey, I, I'd have had many uh, uh, of, of uh, breakdowns in the shower when bro, I had it. Bro, I the water was to it now. Therapeutic. Bro, the water hits you, you just like man, all these years, bro. But, but the beauty of the beauty of it is, is you said something earlier, man. But when we were talking, it's like you have to break something down to build it up. Yeah. And if we we we've we've thought to ourselves, like, I spent 30 years building this building that I thought was me, and now in boom, 30 years, you're like, where is it at? What what can I salvage? What can I take from that? Because I don't believe it was a waste, but it was like, you know what, was it was it constructive? You know, when my daughter asked me about religion, you know, I can't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell her anything. Right, no. I'm not selling you anything. No. I'm not selling you anything. Because if I do not want to, I wanna break this cycle of, of indoctrination at a young age, because I want her to develop her reasoning skills enough so that she can question what I say. My daughter, nine years old, eight years old, and she hit me with some hit ones. Boom. She hit me with some boom. Like, boom. Let me tell you something. So as we get to the uh, 55 minute mark, man, you, your, your daughter, you know, allowing your daughter to be able to challenge you. Right. So <laughs> as we, as, as we, as we close out and get to the, uh, as we close out of the cocky explanation and we're going to move into our little quick money piece as we close out, there was a couple of things I want to uh, summarize what, what, what you were saying with that religion and that daughter thing. Right. So there's something that they're talking about that's big right now with uh psychological safety. Mm -hmm. So put a pin in that real quick. I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back to it. So the whole, the whole thing with religion, the religion is coming down to, so salt, we talked about salt and since, since this is an inaugural, um, I'll be explaining salt in one of my other videos with um, objectively uh, aggressive, and we'll get back into that because me and yeah. you gonna work on our disciplines, and I, I want you to know a lot about salt because I want you to dissect it. Yeah, and and so with the moral foundations coming from Dr. Jo Jonathan Hyde, um, harm and care, fairness and justice, yep. loyalty, sanctity. Um, we'll say authority and liberty. When you're talking about religion, there is a there's a lot of different things that go into it, but there's an authority that goes into that and there's a loyalty that goes into it first. 
right? Yeah. But you 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 think it you think it leans on the tenets of harm and care, fairness and justice. But the way religion is being used now, it falls into the loyalty and authority. Yes. And then it starts pressing upon people's liberties, yes. harm, care, and fairness and justice, right? Oh, yeah. uh, and the sanctity, excuse me. Sanctity is the number one penance. Sanctity, yeah. authority, and then loyalty, and they all mix, right? Yeah. Yep. And so and one so, after another. Right. They just trip they trickle down. And so with that being in effect. It's so hard to break out of group think because you don't think inside of group think. And if you think outside of it, you're the crazy one. Right. Well, but, yeah. But there is a challenge because, see, I look at it is is this is that the best the best spy. Knows. The group think already. Right. So so I remember I'm not talking to a person. I'm talking to an idea. And if I can't differentiate that, I may get offended, but I'm not offended because you're not offending me. Correct. What's offending me is the thought that you are having and you feel the need to defend it. For example, the truth needs no defense. Right. If you have to defend it, then it's not self evidently true. It's not objective. If you have to defend it, it's not objective. If I have to defend it, what's objective is that when the truth is self-evident, look in the sky. Do you see the sun? Do you feel the heat, the warmth? Boom, you feel it. Okay. Now, unless you prove. Yes. Now, when we start to build on the truths, what we find happening is to what end? Because right. groupthink is a form of tribalism. It's a part. It's a subset of tribalism. Yeah, for that's sure. That's why when Trump says something, no matter what he say, the tribe is going to get behind it. Right. Because the tribe understands that I have to be able to accept. Well, this is more like cult thinking, too, though. It's because cult thinking. It's cult thinking. Because the cult leader is always right. It's cognitive ease. Yeah. You don't have to think. Yeah. And, and it's the it's the normalcy bias. Because no. we, yeah, because we're not used to, like, we're not used to uh, our leaders being tyrannical. Oh, so yeah. No. So, so we don't associate presidents with tyranny. With right. fascism, with these strongman tactics, with at least at least Nixon, he was wrong. He quit. He was like, "Hey, you know, I'm doing the wrong thing." Right. So we, we we have come to expect our leaders to be honorable, at least at least to the to the outward. Yeah, yeah. We know, yeah. but we know behind the scenes they are crooks. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. at least they put on the facade, right, 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 of brightness. And so right. when you, and when you have somebody that challenges this idea that that this person is not doing the right thing, it's hard for us to, to not use our bias. Of, well, he's probably doing the right thing because we want to believe, mm. we want to believe this person we, don't want to support the country. We don't We don't have the psychological safety, right? Yes. And, and, and so we think we do, but there's a difference between peace and understanding, mm. right? You have yes. to have, to have, forever peace or you know indefinite peace you have yes. to have understanding but if you only just go for peace you're eventually if you're not being understood that peace is eventually going to rub right and, and peace is not the absence of conflict correct it's correct. the presence of justice because oh, what i will tell you is if there ain't no justice won't be no peace that's in riots and, and riots right. and protests are the voice right. of the and, and, and and we want religion because you have to remember the church used to just kill people who didn't fall in line. Right. They, they would burn you alive. They were okay. saying to the lions. That, that's, so, so their way of dealing with uh, somebody, they didn't put you in an institution. They just killed you. But okay. then they realized you can't kill the truth. That's crazy. So when you think about that, right, when you think about going back to what religion was actually doing. Yeah, murdering people. And these, people, stories, and these people. stories are passed down. They're passed down. They're passed down. They don't look the same. So the psychological safety of understanding that if you if you hypothetically break ranks of this religion, you yes. could die. You could die. Okay. Or we'll, so, or we'll, or we'll kill your reputation. Or we'll kill the reputation. Either yeah. way, there's a death. Yes. Okay, so the psychological safety, right? So there's a doctor, uh, I think it's Dr. Taylor, came up with this psychological safety thing, right? And said there's four stages to psychological safety. Okay. There's inclusion safety, 
there's learner safety there's collabor collaboration safety and there's challenger safety okay right the first level is inclusion being able to even be there yeah and be authentic is one level right okay yep. now you're safe to learn without get, learn all the information right no no holding the information back and then you're able to collaborate with your independent thought yes and then with your independent thought should somebody bring something up you're able to challenge that and say i detest that theory yes that's yeah. that's psychological safety and we don't have the psychological safety to challenge pretty much anything because there are certain conversations i can have with certain some some certain people like let's just say my dad you know shout out to him right he can cut he can cut me off with the authority of being my dad and religion god said and my dad said so what else what else do i need yo and so anytime somebody starts a sentence with god and said in it my first thought is you try to manipulate me boom my first thought is you have a weak argument and you have to pull the card out because nobody see you cannot psychologically say that god didn't tell you to say something whether true or untrue because there's no way to verify it because because yeah god may told you but he ain't told me and if he oh. ain't told me, and if he ain't told me, then you telling me. Okay. Because, because because what I do is I don't I don't challenge people who believe that God has spoke to them. Right. Because there is no cure for that delusion. There is okay. no cure for it. Right. And, and so there's there's no reason to argue with it. There's no reason. But what I will do is I will challenge the premise that it that it applies to me. Correct. So, because, but, when you, yeah. but when you take somebody like your 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 parent, right? Your parent, which is which goes back into that post, w which was made, which you know, forgive your parents because they were only doing dealing with what they had. Like, yeah. you can't hold you. You must take what your parents are. You got to read through like a parable in the Bible to understand what what's actually the message. If someone is like. God said this because you know the intent sometimes is not to manipulate; it's to yeah. it's to drive home a point. Yeah, but, but it depends on who's saying it, right? But, but but context matters. Like, okay, God said this to Elijah. God said this to David. Is that principle? For example, if I go outside right now and see a UFO, and it's revealed to me a UFO, that's a revelation to me. But if I come back and just tell you I saw a UFO, it's not a revelation to you. It's just information. It's information. And, it's and, hearsay. It's yeah, hearsay. It's hearsay. And, and more importantly, if you're using an argument that, you know, books of the Bibles have names on them. Yep. Right. So this is God talking to Joshua. Right. Right. And so if I want to interpose myself, into this character of Joshua and then transpose the message of Joshua onto myself, I can. Right. However, because he was talking to Joshua, it may not be applicable to me. Right. And therein lies, I think, the biggest challenge with, 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 with religion is because I can cherry pick anything I want. Anything you want. That's and, and an then, yeah, that's and then, anchoring bias. Yes. And that's why I don't use this, the Bible as a as a as a discussion point because it's, it's an appeal to authority it's an that's a fallacy you're not right because you're right from the bible correct that don't make and, you right but so with that same thought i think that there there's much to be said as we we we, we coming up on six yeah. minutes out for right now we'll, we'll do that um it's much to be said that sometimes to reiterate a point with people who only think with the bible yeah, it's, a, it's an introduction. Yeah, but I mean, there's much to be said about that. Ham, ham. Hold on. Oh no, but but I, but so so I think this. I I will I will use what they wrote. For example, the, the Bible says this, and this, and I'm only making this argument for you. For example, if somebody said, "Hey, man, why does bad things happen to good people?" You've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. What what would you tell them? Would you ever answer that question? Uh, why does that? Because life ain't fair. Well, hold that thought. Well, the Bible says there are no good people. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. There, Jesus said there are no good people. So, so, so the premise of my question was faulty. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I will, so Damn. I know I will read it only because I understand that we make up answers to fill in the gaps and don't use what was written. Because what was written is hard to apply it. For example, I tell people all the time, the Bible says out of the mouth of every two or three witnesses, everything should be established. So it says that. Out of, so pretty much you can't take the testimony of one person. Even in a death row case, you cannot send somebody to death on the word of one person. So if I don't have a witness, and the Bible says that. So it needs a witness to itself. So that right. means if you telling me God said something, where's the witness? Mm. Where's your witness? And that's scripture. That's from the Bible. You cannot establish anything. And what we do is we'll take one scripture, take it out of context with no witnesses to it. Nobody else said it and use that as some kind of doctrine to teach off of. Boom. Error. Now, that's money. Let me talk about, let, let's talk about how that's money. How there are certain people like, that will use Dr. Martin Luther King's that will, 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 will just tell this different. You know what I mean? You, you know? You, you right. have to, yes. And, and so right now, listen, there are no secondary sources to any stories in the Bible. Did you know that? Oh. There isn't. Like, his, like the Bible is not a history. It's not a history book. Right. And so since there are no, for example, if you would say there were many things written in those days, right? Mm -hmm. There are many scholars like Josephus. Right. He, but the thing that you have to remember is this, is that this was not a tradition or a custom of people who wrote things down. Right. It's like playing telephone. Right. Telephone, telephone, telephone. And we they, they, they have dated that the first letters that were from the Bible were written almost 100 years after. Right, right. Any, any event. That's, that's, a, that's and, a nasty game of telephone right there. No. But what you have to also remember is that the people who were writing it down were not even using the languages of the people who were speaking at that time. Bro, we you don't want to talk about Hebrew, you want to talk about Aramaic, we we'll talk about Greek, but these brothers speaking Latin. These brothers writing the Vulgate. Jerome, the Pope, was like, hey, Jerome, okay, translate this over in our language, but let me look at it, make sure and say what I want to say. For example, I tell you all the time, the name Lucifer, right? Lucifer. Yeah, is, the, day, the name Lucifer is only used one time in the Bible. One time. The brother and, of light. Yeah, but you got to remember, that's, that's Latin. That was written in Hebrew. So, so wait, so if bringer of light is lux, loose means Latin for light, light, loose, right? Translucent, right? Lu Lucifer, Lu luciferance. That's a Latin word. But the origin of the word is not Latin. It doesn't mean light bearer. In, in, in Hebrew, it doesn't. It does in Latin. So, so how is that messing with our minds? It's because we're not reading it from the source that it was written in. Look at the word Hebrew. Look at the word Hebrew. First off, you won't find the word Lucifer in Hebrew because the word didn't exist. Mm. <laughs> it didn't even exist. Hitting them. It didn't you even exist. You hit the... So, 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 hey, yeah. okay, so go to Isaiah chapter 11 and you'll see the word Lucifer and you'll see how the context, right? And it ain't even about a, it ain't even about a celestial being. It ain't even. But you know why that doctor is so important, right? Why? Because the thing is this, man. Religion is based off of, of a doctrine called free will. Free will. God. So Lucifer, yeah. in, the story, in the story, Lucifer was this angel. He was a light bearer. And right. he... Rebe rebelled. Rebel now the question then becomes is what whatever has God created that has rebelled? Because remember, when when was the serpent created in Genesis, right? God yeah. made the serpent, right? Yeah. Now we're told he rebelled because he was beautiful, he lifted up his pride. He this is right. But I'm thinking to myself like this: where is this story at? Then they go to Ezekiel 28 and talks about. You were in Eden, the garden, and, they're, and they're, they're calling this law of double reference, right? So they're saying that even though this isn't the devil, it's referring to him. Right. And this is the challenge with Bible understanding and interpretation. 
is if you use one principle one time, you have to be consistent with the principle. That's why it's called a principle. Yes, it's a principle. And if you cherry pick it, because if you realize he's talking about the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he's talking about the king. And one of the things that we've realized is that when we start to talk about the scripture, and this is a, a separate conversation about the religion, yeah. but we yeah. talk about free will and determination, determinism, the reason that is so much of a challenge for us is because if we don't have free will, if God made everything and he is the controller of everything, if he is the author of everything, then we are, then we have a role in it, but not the role we think we have. Like that you, that you choose God. Well, either he chooses you. Like I was born, I was born a Muslim. I was born in Islam. We pray five times a day. And then let me tell you this. I wasn't doing it because I was doing it because that was what I was told. I didn't know what it was for, but that's right. the custom. And right. so when I talk to people about the, the Bible, you know, I, I study it like I'm studying a, a textbook for deconstruction. Correct, correct. I'm not studying it for, for life. Reasons, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm studying it now to see how the context is. For example, I don't even I don't even have discussions with the Bible about people who don't know the Greek New Testament. If you don't know the Greek words, I won't discuss it with you mm -hmm. because if you don't know what because it was written in Greek, mm -hmm. it wasn't written in English. Mm -hmm. And so so when you start to like, for example, we talked before, you don't teach you don't have a, a conversation about algebra if somebody don't know arithmetic. Correct. Correct. And and when you start to talk about the scripture, one of the things, and this is the, the last thing I'll say about it. No, no, no. You good. One of the one of the things that I find is the most pervasive thing that's misused is this concept of afterlife. Mm. And I will tell you this because you don't find any teaching of the afterlife in the Old Testament. OK, it's not brought up. No, nah. it's not brought up. There, there I, is, I, I don't recall because there, there isn't because every promise that God gave you in the Old Testament was while you were alive, right? And every punishment was while you were alive. Like you'll spend forty years in the desert. Yes, boom. That's but but there was never a punishment that said, "Well, once you die, I'm going to torment you in this fire place of, of eternity." That's never brought up in the Old Testament. Right. It's not even brought up one time. So when you start to see. Where did this teaching come from? Where, where's the origin of it? If it didn't start in the Old Testament, where is the origin? And now we go back to Egypt. The customs. Right. The traditions. Right. The God. That's why, like, you know how, the, what's, the, what's, what's uh, the first commandment? Thou shall have no other gods. Thou shall not cover any other covenant. Yeah. But in Greek mythology, when you die, you go to Hades. Yeah, 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 yeah. So isn't isn't Hades another god? Hades was the god of uh, underworld. The underworld. underworld. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so did, you, why? Did, you, did you ever play God of War? I didn't, bro. You but, need. But, yeah, but, is, but why would a god who says have no other gods before me send you to another god when you die? Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make it's not logical. It's not logical. And the problem with this thinking is that the word has evolved over time. So, for example, the word hell was not added into the Bible into the last couple hundred years. Did you know that? Mm. That, that if you look at the original text in the Greek, the word for hell is Gehenna, G E H E N N A. Gehenna was a field on the east side of Jerusalem where they burned the dead bodies at. Oh shit. It was like a, it was like it was like the refuge dump. Okay. So, so so when you start to see the first the first usage of it is in Matthew chapter 5. And he says, if you call your brother fool, you are in danger of the Gehenna fire. Okay. Which was a fire that took place while you were alive. Okay, so they threw you in the fire. Yes. Man, pause on that. My dog, of course. Are you good, bro? Are you good, bro? Come here. So run that back. Hell 
was perpetrated by actual events going on next to Jerusalem in a, yes. in a fire pit. Yes. And the fire never went out because there was always something to burn. Okay. And the worm never died because it was always eating on the dead carcasses. But when you understand how the thought became translated into afterworld punishment, now we have to go into Greek mythology because Hades is Greek mythology, right? Right. right. right? We right. know it's mythology. Right. Zeus, Poseidon, this right. is called Greek mythology. Right. So, right. How, so how did a Christian go to Greek mythology death? Like if I was if I was uh from Iceland and I believed in Thor, if I died, I went to Valhalla. Right. But, but that's not what we're taught. So anyway, so what happened? is between Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And then Matthew is the first book of the New Testament, right? Right, Matthew. In between those two books, there's 400 years of history. 400 years separate the Old Testament from the New Testament, right? Okay. Then the question then becomes, what was happening in world events during that 400-year period? Well, there was this dude named Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. He was taking Greek culture and Hellenizing people, groups. He was infusing Greek culture into their belief systems. Right. That's why, remember when Jesus was like, uh, who do people say that I am? Right. right. Uh -huh. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Right. Well, why are people saying that he is somebody else who was born four years before him? What? Hold because on. What? What? Well, hold on. So the question was at Je Jesus asked, "Who, who do you people, think I am?" Who do people say that I am? And he would. He wanted to know what they thought about who he was. Right. Well, and did his reputation precede him? Yes, essentially. And so, so, but in Greek culture, they believe that your soul, when you die, could pass on reincarnation. This is the belief of Judaism at the time. Correct. But when they say he was John the Baptist, they meant he was re reincarnated as John and to fill his role. And if some say you are a prophet like Elijah. Right. So because that was their reference. Right. But the, but the problem with this thinking is that we were never told that you are reincarnated into another body when you die. Right. That was Greek mythology thought. Right. And so anyway, so their thought became infused into judaism into the culture so they did not have a separation between mythology mythology and their teaching they just right. mushed it into one then they mushed it together and and so there was a story about this guy who was born blind and then jesus asked him he said was did he sin did his parents sin and he was like no he was born this way essentially saying that that they believe he reincarnated as a blind person, blind person, and or some sort of sin from some other time. Right. But that's not what we're taught, right? We're not taught that, right? Because we're told that the sins of the father don't affect the son. We're, like if your dad do a sin, it don't affect you, right? Because because be, but that's what we're taught. Yeah, well, no, well because because the, the 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 idea of original sin is that we're all guilty because of Adam. Right, but, but that's a Paulian teaching. Okay, so my my thought process is this: we don't use Paul for doctrine. We don't use Paul for doctrine because when Judas killed himself, they had to name a new apostle. Right? They picked. You hear me? Oh, we froze. Oh, we froze. Oh, we froze. Uh, I think we froze. I don't know if you, uh, sorry, baby. Oh, I think you froze. Oh, can you see waving hands? Oh, look. Oh, I think we. Uh, I think we. We might max the time out, man. I'm gonna see. Hold up. Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm putting in the chat box.
You still there? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe got maybe does it have a time limit on it? I'm sure it probably did, but it's got us at um 123 right now. But we I can... know, yeah, yeah, we good, bro. I I, I you know you, sometimes I get off my little tangents. Oh no, yeah, you just like me, but you going down the roads that we need to, but we'll 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 take that to um to transition yeah. into uh into the closing, man, because we can do this all night, but yeah. We'll 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 do a, a better a better schedule, and yeah. I'll figure out some things, and I'll work out the kinks. I think sometimes it was just better for me to go ahead and do it, and then make some mistakes. And oh yeah, bro. I love it. military style, right? Hey man, so, hey, we grow as we grow for sure. So I think as we exit, um, I, I think three things I, I I would want for me in this one. So the first one, I'm gonna give a book. Um, and I want you to give a book recommendation. And uh, okay. will it, uh, the first thing, though, before we give the book recommendation is uh, we we're talking about interchangeability of the word religion and spirituality. So, and, uh, you know, a quick little two minutes, what you would say the difference is between um, religion and spirituality, your um, your your book recommendation um, for the week and a money tip. Okay. Uh, man, you know, I, I really I really get to a point, man, where I believe now and I say believe with I say believe because I think that all spiritual truths start with your own belief, not with somebody, not what somebody told you to believe. Right. It's my belief that that the journey is a journey of isolation until you get inclusion but you have to not be afraid with spiritual to be alone and isolated with your thought because you have to be able sometimes to forsake the comfort of religion and the group to have truths that are individual and personalized to you and i think spirituality is getting comforted in a truth that no one can provide you it's it's a truth that you can't get from a book you can't get it from anywhere but the peace that you have from it, whether it be if you believe that nature is God, if you believe that water is God, you believe that people are God, whatever you believe, if it brings you a peace that is apart from others, and then you take that peace and you connect with others who share that struggle. And, and first off, starting off with the idea that I don't have all the answers. I don't know all the truths but I am not going to close off the possibility or portal for truth coming into my life. Okay. Whereas religion tells me to accept and believe what somebody told you to believe as opposed to what resides for you. And that may be the case for some people. For some people, they may have had the peace just to be told to them. My book recommendation, man, I was just, I was just in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. Um. Oh, just mercy, just mercy, yeah. man. It's a, it's a movie, but the book yeah. is better. I got mine. I got my book. I can hey, go mine. I, I I like this book, man, because I find that there's a quote. There's a quote in this book, man. Oh man, he talks about that. It's it's not the ideas in your mind that changed the world is the conviction of your heart. Mm. So, oh, there you go, bro. It's not the ideas in your mind that changed the world. It's the conviction in your heart. And see, that's where I believe where knowledge can only take you so far, man. But the conviction of your heart has to take you further. Uh, and my money tip, man, is I will tell you this, man, you know, when it comes to money, my money tip is don't let it master you. Um, but if it does master you, you have to remember that money isn't the root of all evil. The love of it is. The love of it is the root of all evil. And people just say money's real evil. No, it's the love. Right. And I believe that we have to become educated on on taking people who have historically been denied resources 
giving it to them, they're going to make foolish decisions. And that's okay. You're going to make bad choices. You're going to get the car loan. They got 18% interest on there because you just want that car. Because that's because you don't realize that there's a difference. Mm-hmm. But I will tell people is that learn from your mistakes and don't judge yourself too harshly. Have grace with your mistakes, with your money. Have grace with yourself because you're going to make some more, but don't beat yourself up because this is what you have when you have people who have historically been denied resources. Like when I first got my first military paycheck, I went out and bought a bunch of stupid stuff. I wish I could have. I wish I could have had when I was high school. We that's all it is. We all overcompensate for overcompensate. And so I would say oh. overcompensate, but have some grace because it's it's, it's 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 normal. That's what's up, man. All right. So I guess um <clears throat> in my quick breakdown of spirituality and religion, I mean, without going too far, man, you know, spirituality is individual when religion is um an institution or organization and they have a purpose right and so if they have a purpose you need to understand that right yeah. understand the purpose because i i think it's logic over loyalty mm. right logic over like loyalty it. because we all need social groups right to to fit into for inclusion because that's the normal human experience yes but i like to say because i believe in god right because you have to have some sort of belief system to yeah. make you feel like you're doing something and there's a mission and purpose. Yes. And, and some people put those things of hell in, in place to, to give them the motivation because they don't want to get in trouble. Mm. Stay on more development. Yes. So spirituality is on the higher vibrational end and religion is on the lower end for people who don't understand. Yes. But to be held accountable and has now been weaponized, which is why spiritual growth and authentic power is the goal. And so I will tie my money tip into that, which is not going to be a specific. I'll give a philosophy, which is to understand that money is a tool, yeah, not the goal, the not tool. the total goal. It is a tool, right? Spiritual growth and enlightenment, yes, evolution is the goal. And soul work is the work that we have to do. So if you line up your soul with the work, it shouldn't be work. It should feel like love. And yeah. if you love what you do, you can do it. Right. And I would say with all that, my book recommendation is The Seat of the Soul by Gary Zukov. You write that one. I normally keep a copy of it, but I promise you, I throw these things. I can't say like Brett Favre no more because he's uh-huh. sheesh. But you know what I mean? I toss them out. But the seat of the soul, it talks about seeking authentic power, which is soul okay. work. And so this is what I think we're doing, Ham, soul work. And with that, man, that's that's objectively aggressive. You know what I mean? OA coming through first time. And I, I think it was success, man. So I want to thank hey, you. I'm honored. I'm honored to be the first guest. I appreciate you. Hey, man, hey. I'm all about that action. Hey. And like, for real. If we, if we, I want to make this a thing, man. Like we have our lighthouse, uh, a lighthouse series where we're, you know, this is a guide or a warning. Like take it how you want to, but regardless of what, it's light. Light. See it. Focus. Yeah, bro. I'll catch you on the other side, man. Appreciate it. Later.